listening to Tapped In, Buckham County's Half Hour to Empower on WRES 100.7 FM in Asheville. Listen up and get tapped into local important resources, information, and topics. Learn more about the topics of today's show at buncombecounty.org. Okay, it's time to get tapped in. Hello, 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 and greetings to everyone out there in Asheville, Buncombe County. Guess what? It's time to get tapped in. I'm one of your hosts, Zakia Bell Rogers, Ian. And yeah, I'm Leonard Jones. That is my wonderful award winning host. Leonard, welcome to May, where we are wintering yes. this time of year, and we are covering up bones and things of that nature to protect our joints. And so that's going to take us right into who we have today. <laughs> Who do we have? And today I would like to introduce our special guest is Billy Breeden, a health and human Buckham County's Health and Human Services age friendly coordinator, along with Lori Dotson, our social work supervisor, who will be here to, today to discuss with us about older American um, month and that this is May. And the theme this year is Aging Unabound. And to remind that Elder Abuse Awareness Month, which spans from Mother's Day to Father's Day this year. So welcome, Billy and Lori. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Awesome. So before we jump into questions, can you all tell us a little bit about yourself? We'll go ahead and start with Billy. I'm, I'm, as Leonard said, I'm the age-friendly coordinator for Buncombe County, and I oversee all the work that's being done Mm -hmm. in age-friendly Buncombe County. And um, we have a collaboration of over 80 organizations, businesses, older adults, and work groups that work together to um, with the common vision that older adults are safe, well, and engaged. Mm-hmm. And that's defined in the Age-Friendly Action Plan from 2021 to 2024, and it aligns with Buncombe County's 2025 strategic uh, plan, um, especially the area of an engaged and capable community that, that protects older adults or all residents' ability to age in place. Mm-hmm. All right, that's awesome, because we, we know how important it is to age in place, and thank you so much for what you do. Lori, tell us who you are. Well, I'm Lori Dotson, and I am a supervisor with Adult and Aging Services with Buckham County. I've been with the county for 29 years this year. 29 years. 29 years, and I love the population that we serve in adult making services so are you saying you started working when you were 10 correct exactly (laughs) exactly (laughs) so i'm going to start with the first question then i'm gonna let leonard go because leonard is our historian and he's going to get all the details so we know that buncom county has a reputation for being a great place for retirees what is the current number of our older people population our older resident population uh, currently, there's 78,000 older adults living in Buncombe County, and that's huge. That's 30% of the population, mm. and it's only going to increase over the years. Um, the North Carolina um, State Budget and Management Office said that in 2040, mm. we're going to have about 106,938 older adults, and Right now, Buncombe County is third in count. There's 100 counties in North Carolina, and um, there's 85 counties where older adults outnumber younger people, Mm -hmm. uh, 17 and under, and Buncombe County is third in this. And there's only 15 counties where younger people outnumber older adults. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's and even in 2040, uh, Buncombe County will drop to five um, out of those 85 counties, mm-hmm. and there's there'll still be more older adults and people younger, 17 and younger. Mm. Wow, you, you know we're living longer. We're living longer we, and healthier these days. Well, a lot of us yeah. because you know we're getting that information out. Of there, so people are living longer, living healthier, and how do we keep them home? So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. I'm going to pass it over to Atlanta because he is ready. <laughs> yeah, so you know, you mentioned earlier that May is Older American 
um, Awareness Month. And so the theme is Agent of Bound. Can you expound on what that means for this month? Yeah, so um, the theme every year is um, picked by the Administration for Community Living, which is the U.S. De a division of the U.S. Department of mm -hmm. Health and Human Services. And um, they lead the nation in recognizing Older Americans Month. So this month, um, the Aging Unbound theme, it's all about um, celebrating the many contributions that older adults make to the community when they're engaged. So we have to make sure we keep our uh, older adults engaged and provide opportunities to for the engagement. And it's also about recognizing the diverse aging experiences mm -hmm. among older adults because older adults are a very diverse population and, it, and also about combating the stereotypes mm -hmm. about aging because there's a lot of ageism in, in our society. Oh, can you get, tell us like what is ageism? Because you know, we have all these isms and we want to make sure everybody is aware and understand what type of actions create ageism. Okay, so ageism um, is, is prejudice, discrimination, or stereotyping against someone based on their age. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's throughout our whole society. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's at the societal level, uh, the system level, and the individual level. And um, people as young as four learn about ageism mm -hmm. from their parents. So it's very in, it's infiltrated through our whole society, and mm -hmm. it's how their parents talk about their older family members. They might say, "Oh, you know, grandma." forgot something again or 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 make some sort of derogatory comment like that. Mm -hmm. So so we grow up with these messages that aging is bad and mm -hmm. it's not we're all aging. Mm -hmm. Like aging uh people think of like frail and and being debilitated. But what what we really need what you touched on longevity, we really need to focus on longevity because people are living longer and mm -hmm. and if you talk about aging you're singling out older adults whereas mm -hmm. longevity it's talking about the lifespan like from mm -hmm. birth to death and and it um encompasses all ages and aging isn't the problem ageism is the problem mm -hmm. So I have a question you had mentioned around, um, especially trying to keep our aging population engaged. Are there some engagement opportunities for older um, residents of Oakland County? Yes, I have plenty of <laughs> engagement op opportunities in age-friendly Buncombe County. We have a lot of what we call initiatives or work groups, and we have so we have older adults that are involved in this work group and I really appreciate them because mm -hmm. they bring so much of their work and life experience to our, our work group. So mm -hmm. some of the ones um, that people could participate in, we have a housing options for aging in place work group where it focuses on bringing attention to the home repair needs and mm -hmm. um, affordable housing for older adults. We have uh, Blue Ridge Pride Generation Plus, mm -hmm. which advocates for the LGBTQ plus community 55 and older. And um, they also provide education and social opportunities mm -hmm. for, for this underserved population. There's the Asheville Buncombe Black Elders mm -hmm. uh, work group, and um, this is to promote wellness and socialization for for Black elders in the community. And, and we just had our first in community meeting uh, April first on yeah. the Saturday, which you're part of, Zakia. I could not do it without you and Rashida. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, and we love doing it. We love getting our uh, getting our folks just in general connected. Um, because, you know, there were a lot of things that came out um, with um, surveys during the pandemic and how important, uh, it, you know, our, our aging population, regardless if it's large or not, it is a very vulnerable 
population um, and they were very isolated and because you know there are those those technology things that you know um, if you're not working every day and using those things you know zoom was kind of new mm-hmm. to all of us and you know if you haven't been in the work field and so you know our aging population um, was handling that a little rough during the um the pandemic so it's so great to get them reconnected and we thank you for all you do with our aging population how can they find out like i know you list um several events is there what place that um residents can go to to find out about these or is it posted anywhere um, yeah we well we do have an um you you can find out about age friendly Buncombe County through the Engage Buncombe page, and mm-hmm. there's one for age friendly. Mm-hmm. There's also an age friendly um, web page through Buncombe County. Or um, what I learned that the uh, our first in community aid meeting that the older adults they prefer telephone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if anyone would like to call me. My phone number is 828-767-4376. And I'd be happy to talk to anyone that wants to get involved in mm-hmm. age-friendly Buncombe County because it's it's for all of us. It's not just for older adults. Can you repeat that number one more time in case people just listening miss some digits? Okay, <laughs> so it's you're, you're calling... Billy Breeden, and I'm the age friendly coordinator, and it's 828 767 4376. And this is for our elders that are 55 and older. Don't try to sneak in there if you are 54 in three months. We're going to chat. No, we're not, but it, it's always good to prepare. And, you know, and one of the things I always ask because some people say, oh, I'm not an elder yet. What what is the age that defines elder? Well, the the Older Americans Act of nineteen sixty five. They're the ones that that provide the funding for a lot of these services for older adults, and they define uh, an older adult as sixty years old. But like Blue Ridge Pride Generation Plus, their criteria is fifty five plus. Mm-hmm. Um, like Habitat for Humanity that provides home repairs for older adults. Some of their programs are 50. So Mm -hmm. it really um, depends. But when you're talking about government funded programs, it's 60 and older. Yeah. So is that why the retirement age is after 60 for most folks? Because of the government um, setting for that? And to receive um, Medicare benefits. Yeah, Medicare benefits. So it's 60. Okay. I mean, so ahead. we know with uh, <laughs> older adults, a lot of times family members, so younger um, children are taking, not younger children, but adult children are taking care of their aging parents. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the services that Buffalo County offer in terms of helping um, just older residents and themselves or even just family members that's caregivers that's trying to help? That's a great question, Leonard, Um, and I'm glad you brought it up because, as Billy stated, um, aging in place is one of the strategic priorities for Mm -hmm. Buckingham County. And one way we do that is by providing um, a vast array of services so that people can get the assistance they need, stay as independent as possible, and um, if they have a caregiver, it gives that caregiver a break Mm -hmm. and some support. So there are lots of different programs Mm -hmm. that the county has. and I also just want to piggyback on what you said, Zakia, about the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I think what we've really learned is that people need connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I do just want to make a point that even in um, nursing home and facilities, if you are um, placed, um, there are now laws that came um, to pass during the pandemic mm-hmm. to allow family members to have that opportunity to see their relatives. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. wherever you are, you should be having the right to um, have that socialization. So in the county, there are different things. And um, we have adult daycare. Mm-hmm. We have um, in-home aid. Um, we have um, adult day health. And so adult daycare and adult day health are programs that are supported both federally and um by the state and they allow a person to go into 
a setting with other individuals and have that socialization. Mm -hmm. That also gives them the opportunity if they do have a caregiver to get a break. And we mm -hmm. have um, two daycare providers in Buckham County right now for adult day. Um, that's Mountain Care and Irene Mortham. And if you did have any interest in obtaining those services, you can always call our intake line, which is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year at 250-5800. And what does adult daycare look like? Is that a for more advanced um, need, need person or is, or, or, even day health, is that like more advanced um, need care or is that just, you know, I can't drive anymore, my, my, I live with my kids and I, I need some socialization? Sure. So it really just depends on the person. Mm -hmm. um, it is persons um, with developmental disabilities mm -hmm. or um, some type of disability that makes you need to have some assistance with your um, activities of daily living mm -hmm. and um, if you are interested in the program you meet with a social worker they come out and do what's called a functional assessment and they mm -hmm. determine if you meet the target criteria to be in the program mm -hmm. okay is there any financial cost with that there is a financial cost um, but I will say that um, we also have monies that help support that through mm -hmm. the county so um, there's something called um, consumer contribution, and that's discussed um, on an individual level. And some people, because of their financial need mm -hmm. um, and their poverty level, aren't able to make that contribution, but that would never prevent you from going into the program. Mm -hmm. That's why we have, um, like Billy said, we have different funding sources um, for 60 plus and 59 and younger. So mm -hmm. those are called HCCBG and SSBG monies. Mm -hmm. And we use those monies um, to, that are allocated to us to help people participate in the programs if they're not able to pay for them themselves. And you didn't mention in-home aid. What, is, what that looks like? <clears throat> so in-home aid is also a program um, that is run through the county. Um, and again, depending on your age, mm -hmm. um, you access a certain pot of money, but essentially in Buckham County, we have um, providers that we contract with mm -hmm. that come out and they help with basic home maintenance mm -hmm. and also help with um, personal care. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And that that allows, again, um, you know, some adults, um, you know, they might be in a wheelchair. They're very independent. They're able to get into their motorized scooter and they can drive, but they can't carry things. So mm -hmm. they need somebody to help them take out their trash so that their home environment is safe and sanitary. Mm -hmm. So they can do, you know, things like um, help with the trash, mm -hmm. help with doing the dishes, um, sweeping, help mopping. with sweeping, yeah. mopping, changing laundry, yeah. changing your linens. Um, those are the mm -hmm. typical services. Um, uh, uh, so sometimes um, like stand near mm -hmm. because people um, might fall getting mm -hmm. in and out of the bathtub or the shower um, and they need someone just to be there so that they can safely enter and exit the shower. So. And, you know, I, I'm glad you said that, entering and, and exiting the shower. Are there programs, because I know, I, I've been thinking about this because I plan on living a very long time. I told my daughter that um, when I'm going to live so long that every day I walk out of my room to get coffee, she's going to be like, oh my gosh, she's still alive. <laughs> so I plan on, I, I plan on just forgetting how to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, but, but I was looking at my, my tub and I was like, I can't get in that. And like, you know, I, cause like I, I had a, a surgery and I was like, I had a rough time raising up my leg and I was like, okay, so what happens when I get older? And so, I, you know, they have all these different tubs that you can like, um, that, that are um, um, zero lift. Tubs. Yeah, zero Correct. lift tubs that you like, you basically walk in and close the door <laughs> and it like seals. And so yes. are there programs to help folks upgrade their house 
to those type of things or um or, or the programs to help them um age proof their house. You know we child proof our house, our age proof our house, like putting rails down down a hallway yes. and things of that nature. Yes, those programs definitely exist. Okay. Um, mountain housing opportunities. Mountain housing. Um council on aging of Buckham County. Habitat for Habitat humanity. For humanity. Are there any others, Billy, that I'm forgetting? Uh, community action opportunities yes. help wow. with weatherization of the house. But one thing I wanted to mention about those tubs that that where you see them advertised where the older adult steps in and and it has a like a zero step entrance mm -hmm. and and the doorway. Well, I've been told the the bad thing about the, those tubs is the water gets cold pretty quickly. Oh, no. Yeah, and so I, um, someone recommended against, they said don't even try it. Oh, wow. I wonder why the water gets cold. I, I, I might do some research on that. Um, so would I, a shower, would a shower chair be better? Like the the lower entry shower chair? I mean, would a shower chair? a shower chair and then one of those, um, like, the removable hose, remove, remove, yeah, head the hand head. Head. Yeah, yes. the hand head, shower head. See, you see, it only took three of us to figure out <laughs> yeah. what that yeah. was called. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so I have another question just thinking about, things you hear on the news about the rise of Alzheimer's and on, early onset of dementia. What are some of the services out for residents who are experiencing that currently right now? Um. Well, there's mountain care, um, which is an adult daycare. Um, a lot of the, their participants have memory issues, but it, it's a place that provides respite for the caregiver. And, okay. and they're, they're open like Monday <clears throat> through Friday. Um, they provide care. Um, like adult daycare, uh, memory care provides care management for people suffering uh, from dementia and mm -hmm. and uh, helps the caregiver mm -hmm. um, like through like through dementia and um, provides like memory care college so that caregivers know what they're dealing with. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, is there funding as well, like for to help? to help family members stay with their family or uh, because we know that's one of the things we hear about is the financial burden of um, being a caregiver for your parents or um, older sibling because sometimes um, we may have a similar a sibling that um, is um, that and that gets an illness or gets injured and has to become uh, cared for by another sibling. So is there funding? There is funding, Zaki, and again, it really depends on who you are, mm -hmm. your age, and what your benefits are. So mm -hmm. for example, you could have North Carolina Medicaid, mm -hmm. and you could be eligible for PCS, personal care services, mm -hmm. or CAP services. Mm -hmm. And um, there's different processes for different people. So um, with CAP, there um, is CAP Choice, mm -hmm. where you actually identify a caregiver, um, and that person is paid mm -hmm. um, through Medicaid for the services that they provide. Mm -hmm. um, it's also possible for PCS. Um, there's a lot of communities that are looking at um, consumer-directed services. Um, I don't think that we have that in Buffalo County at this time, but that is definitely something that's been discussed. And then PCS, the personal care services, if you're Medicaid eligible, then you can get services through Liberty. Mm. And Liberty um, is a company in Raleigh. They assign um, someone to come and do an assessment. And then depending on the hours that you are approved for, they connect you with a provider who provides those services. Mm. But you also could be on Medicare and have a long-term care plan. Um, and believe me, um, I will put a shout out to the Council on Aging and the SHIP program. Um, if you have questions about Medicare, you should always be contacting them. And I would encourage anyone listening to the program who is eligible for Medicare or is helping someone 
to get those services started to talk to the ship coordinator. They, um, you can't believe the amount of information and knowledge that you need to have to sign up for Medicare yeah. and all the different plans. So um, you, some people, depending on the plan they have, they have mm -hmm. long-term care insurance, and that can also help pay for a caregiver to come into the home to provide that assistance. So it really depends on the person. And then some people have, um, you know, their own funds and their own monies, and they can contact um, agencies and organizations on their own and pay for those services out of pocket. So it's so much information um, as transitioning into an older um, adult. It almost feels like you all need to have like a aging conference, like in just a day where people come in and like they have um, Medicare workshops and, and all of these things because it is so much information. It's almost like going to college for help, for aging, you know? I, absolutely. Um, when I first started in Adult Protective Services, I went to the SHIP training, mm -hmm. um, which was a day-long training, and people were saying, why are you here? You don't look, you know, and I said, well, I need to be educated, because it really does mm -hmm. impact the ability to access services depending on the insurance that you have, mm -hmm. and so... Um, that's why if a social worker is involved with you and is asking you those questions, it's not because we're trying to get information from you, um, you know, that is protected that you, you know, might mm -hmm. be mistrusting about. It's because we need to know so that we can help you get the services that you need. Now, you said something. You said adult protective services. Yes. Okay. So, we all know what children protective services is. What is adult protective service and how can someone utilize it or when does someone need to utilize it? Another great question, Zakia. <laughs> so General Statute 108A, Article 6, states that every person in North Carolina who has a reasonable suspicion to believe that an adult and an adult is fined by 18 or older unless you're adjudicated, mm -hmm. emancipated, married, or in the armed forces, but pretty much 18 or older, um, if you believe they're abused, neglected, or exploited, you need to make a report to your local mm -hmm. social services agency so that that can be assessed. So in Buckham County, you can call 828-250-5800. And again, I want to say that is a number that is available to you, whether our agency is open for business or not, because we never close. We're open mm -hmm. 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So if you have a concern, mm -hmm. you need to call and make a report. Your report has to meet three criteria in order to be evaluated. The adult has to be functionally disabled. Mm -hmm. And that's important, and we could talk for probably an hour about functional disability, but um, that means that the adult has a physical or mental health mm -hmm. diagnosis that makes them unable to do their activities of daily okay. living. And that can include substance abuse, mm -hmm. so um, physical or um, substance abuse, mental health, and I just want to say May is also Mental Health Month, and um, mental health is also a big a thing that's mm -hmm. impacting um, older adults. So um, don't don't think it just has to be someone with a disability who, because some people just some people in a wheelchair, you might look at them and say, oh, they're disabled, but they're really not. Mm -hmm. They're able to do everything that everything, they need to yeah. do for themselves. So um, we always say. You're on the side of caution, make a report. Um, they also have to have been abused, neglected, or, or exploited. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a preventative service. It's something has already happened. And then they need to be in need of protection. And that means that they themselves or someone on their behalf mm -hmm. is not able to protect them from what's happening to them. And was there a third thing you said? Okay. Um, just they have to be functionally disabled, mm -hmm. abused, neglected, or exploited, and they have to be in need of protection. Okay, in need of protection. Mm -hmm. So we know that Elder Abuse Awareness Month runs from Mother's Day to Father's Day in June. Is there any um, anything, any events or anything that community needs to know to help kind of bring awareness and inform them about this? Absolutely. Um, we have the World Elder Abuse Awareness Day event, which is on June 15th this year. 
at Carrier Park from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And we would love any member of the community to come and attend that event. Um, we will have um, some ice cream and <laughs> from how you made ice cream and small cakes and um, for dessert. And we will be having a walk and we'll have some speakers and an opportunity for people to come out um, to support um, awareness and to learn more information from the vendors who are at the walk. Okay. Oh, that's pretty neat. You know, we're, you know what I'm getting? I am getting the eye from our, 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 our studio guy, um, um, who we lovingly call Uncle Randy. He is telling us we only have two minutes left. Yeah. And so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. We could talk. I wish I could have you guys on here in uh, two more weeks and we could also, <laughs> we could, you know, finish up and get more information. But, um, if there is something that you want to reiterate or let our audience know, um, this is your chance. So, Laura, we're going to start with you. Sure. I would just say if there's any service that you're interested mm -hmm. in or need in information about, or if you need to make a report of abuse, neglect, or exploitation, always call 828-250-5800. And like Billy referenced, we also have the websites, and there's tons of information there if you're more technically inclined and would like to access the information there. Okay. And I would also say, if you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. I think it's just really important to say to people, like, don't be afraid to call us. It's important um, because you may be the only person who cared enough to call us about a person. Mm -hmm. And that intervention um, could help change their life forever. Yes. Yes. Billy? So I'd like to um, tell everyone about an Older Americans Month program that Buncombe County Health and Human Services is having. Um, we're partnering with Blue Ridge Pride Gen Plus, Counts on Aging, Lay in the Sky, Meals on Wheels, and it's going to be our program is What Would a World Without Ageism Look Like? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be Thursday, May 18th from 3 to 5 p.m. at the East Asheville Library, and we'll be talking about reframing aging, mm -hmm. educating about ageism, highlighting the contributions older adults make and preparing for our futures. And if anyone would like to be involved in age-friendly Buncombe County, call me at 828-767-4376. All right, Leonard? And I just always encourage community to find out more about engagement opportunities, especially around aging and plays. I mean, you always can go out to um, engage. You can look up engage.bumpum.com um, org, or always go to bumpumcounty.org for all your information about Bumpum County. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and we know that what April showers come Mayflowers, and here we are standing in the um, you know. A, a, um, age friendly uh, Buckham County, and we're also talking about the um, Older Americans Month. I, I want to make sure I get it right um, this month, but you know, I think so often we we put so much um, heaviness on age. Um, it's either you're too young, um, you're you haven't had enough experience, or you're too old. And I think in reality, we have to start. Um, embracing every stage of, of age. Um, there's wisdom in every stage of our life. And until we all sit down and, and break down those stereotypes, we will always have um, a lack of care for um, a certain group. And, and that's the way we need to break it down. It's by having open conversations and, and, and really understanding that this is a process we're all going to do. Every day, you're, you're older than what you were a minute ago, a day ago, a week ago. And if you're lucky enough to live to be 100, you're going to be older than a whole lot of people. Um, so in, 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 just to say this, people rarely complain about a 100-year-old trade. They rarely complain that it's in the way or that um, it's causing too much, it's doing this, it's doing that. However, we look at older people and we start to feel sorry and we start to say, oh, you know, they're so frail, they're so this. But just like that 100-year-old tree, 
every ring they've gone around in this earth, they have gathered so much knowledge and so much wisdom. So instead of looking at them as poor them, look at the older American, the older adults in your life as wisdom, as, as people who have been there and done that, and ask them about the things that they've seen, connect with them. And then hopefully you can connect with folks that are younger than you as well. We are all connected, just like the, the roots of a forest. But it is when we start to talk to each other and we realize those connections. Again, we are one bottom, and this is Tapped In. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Tapped In, Buncombe County's half hour to empower, here on WRES 100.7 FM in Nashville. Learn more about today's topics at buncombecounty.org. Otherwise, stay tuned for more great episodes coming up. Ha, 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 ha.